So again, thank you so much for being here on a Saturday morning. Uh, that's pretty huge for us to have a live audience to test this with. So we're really excited to be here. Um, so I think as someone mentioned, you received the cases this morning, right? So you might not be too, too familiar with them. Yeah, so the Mark Juarez case. Yeah, perfect. So, but that's okay because first of all, we're not going to talk about the case. We're actually going to do a little pantomime. Does anyone know what a pantomime is? Has anyone been to one? So it's really popular uh, for children. Um, it's a live show, it's a live play, and the audience usually shouts out suggestions. It's almost like an improv show. The audience kind of gets to decide where the show goes. So that's what we're going to do here today. So we have the main character in the case here. We have Mark Juarez. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, you're going to kind of get to decide uh, what situations in the case you want to see unfold so that we can uh, really get to see um, some of the options and some of the decisions, the possible decisions that he could make. So has anyone seen this diagram on the board before? It's also on the front of the case. Does anyone know what this is? Yeah, massage tool. Yeah, sorry, what was your name? Amelia. Amelia, yeah. So I don't know if anyone heard Amelia. She said a uh, massage tool. So they're quite common these days. They usually have a little ball at the top where you grab it. Um, and they have four or three uh, uh, sticks with uh, smaller balls coming out of them. And you can use them to massage someone. Um, I think we're all familiar with them. But I'm going to ask you to put that aside and pretend like you don't know what they are and you haven't seen them yet. So Mark. I don't know if anyone uh, has gotten this far, but Mark has designed this tool. But Mark doesn't know what to do with it yet. So Mark has a problem. What's his problem? Yeah. So he doesn't know who to, who to sell it to. Exactly. So Mark, what's your problem? Well, I am a massage therapist from Germany. I have been a massage therapist for over 10 years. And my clients tell me that I'm a wonderful massage therapist. And in doing so, I'm finding that as a massage, my fingers get really hurt, my forearms get hurt, and many massage therapists I've seen, they have developed severe arthritis because of the repetitive motion they do. So, one fine early morning in 1990, I came up with a wonderful idea to come up with a tool that's made of wood. This is the massage tool. And I have used this on several of my clients. They love it. And it helps my hand as I massage them. So it's a benefit for me because I can continue to be a good massage therapist. And the clients like it because they get a very good massage. I have given these samples to my friends. They have used it in their homes, in their businesses. And they love it too. I am thinking. Is there a market out there that I can uh, market this and make some money? All right. Help me. So what are some steps we think Mark can take to figure out who to sell this to? Take a survey. Take a survey? Yeah, take a survey of who? Anyone he sees on the street, stop him, say, wait, take my survey. Or maybe through a network, friends of friends. Yeah? All right. Whatever network he has available to him. Any network he has available. Okay. Customers. All right. So let's see what would happen if Mark was then to talk to one of his clients, one of his uh, massage clients. What would that look like? It's over here, Mark. I can't stand oh. it. Would you please? Thank you. Well, here's the living proof. She likes what I'm doing to her with my tool. It's the greatest. But I don't know, Mark. I don't think I could use one at home myself. I really can't reach that spot. OK, then you have to go to a massage therapist and get it done. Oh, so it's not for me. It's 
for massage therapists. Likely, yes. Oh, how many massage therapists are there in Germany? Well, in each town you can find a few massage therapists. So there is a market at least out there for me to sell those, that tool to those massage therapists. Okay, I don't know how many though. All right, so if we think of this in terms of impact and feasibility, I've drawn a diagram here with impact on the y-axis and feasibility on the x-axis. So if we think of impact as the impact that it will have on the customers, is this something that they need? Is it something that they want? And if we think of feasibility as how feasible is it to produce this product? Is it unique? Will it ma maintain its competitive edge? So in this little scenario that we saw, how impactful is it for customers? Yes. Yeah, so you will hopefully buy it in hopes that someone else will be able to use it, because you can't really massage yourself, can you? So you think it's for people who live with other people? OK. It could be used by an individual if you can add uh, like a device to it or a stick, or like it's missing something. So it's not complete. Yeah, it's not complete. So it's missing something. So it might not be completely feasible to sell it as it is. Okay. Well, if I'm going to a massage therapist, I don't really want them to use a tool on me. I kind of, you know, unless I'm doing like hot stones, which is, you know, you could be doing it for the heat. I kind of like the feel of, you know, like the actual pressure of a massage versus the tool of um, using the dude. Yeah, the actual technique. Whereas, as, uh, sorry, what was your name? Alexis. Whereas Alexis was saying, you know, if you live at home with someone, they can just do it for you. Yeah. Anyone else from something from this little scenario that we just saw? Uh, yeah. I feel this is the type of product where people have to like try it because if you see a picture of it, you're not gonna know like if it's good or not. So it's a good idea if, like to give out free samples and all that to like massage therapists. Yeah, it's a bit funny looking. Yeah. How do you know it's actually gonna do the job? If it's actually gonna feel good? These little wooden balls, if they're gonna just poke into your back. Yeah, so it's a bit foreign. Yes. It reminds me of one of those products that you would find at like Brookstone. Um, kind of the have, novelty. Yeah, well, they have them like at, in the front, and they you see like some store retail person like playing with it and yeah, demoing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's what it looks like. Yeah. So I'm getting the sense that maybe it's a bit of a, a goofy looking product. Maybe the novelty, um, novelty product. Uh, people won't really know how to use it, and you kind of need someone to be able to uh, help you use it. All right, so given this, um, what if Mark was then, what, uh, what's another step that Mark could take to figure out if this is something that could be taken further? He's got this idea, but he doesn't know what to do with it yet. So we still are a little bit shaky on who the customer might be, but how can we take this forward to explore this? Yeah. Maybe if there are similar products like this. So see what else is out there? Yeah. yeah. Maybe not just hand out samples to his massage therapist friends, but also maybe hand out samples to customers as maybe like a maintenance thing, like because a lot of times, you know, you have to go keep going back to the massage therapist. Yeah, so take it home, try it for yourself, and maybe give some instructions. Yeah? Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I was just saying, do like a patent search. Patent search? Mm. Okay, why do you say that? Yeah, okay. Well, let's see if Mark, how Mark does when he tries to go on this search. So let's see if Mark, um, how this conversation goes with Mark uh, and the patent officer. Well, good morning. This is the patent office. What would you like to patent? Oh, I have this wonderful wooden massage tool I have developed, uh -huh. and I have found that it really works well on my clients. Uh -huh. And I see a nice opportunity for me to patent it and then uh, sell it worldwide. Uh huh. So it's a ball and some other balls, and they're connected with sticks. Yes. Hmm. 
Hmm, let me check. I'm sorry, the lollipop has already been invented. Oh, so sad to hear. No, you cannot have a patent. Oh no. <laughs> so it's a really simple design. Um, it doesn't really warrant a patent. Uh, it's some sticks and some balls glued together. It's not very complex. He's also distributed it to some of his friends. So he's, also, he's kind of gotten this design out there already. So maybe it's not feasible in terms of protecting its uniqueness. Um, so maybe the unique construct, but again, it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty simple design. Um, what are some other ways he can explore this product, see where it would be most useful? Yes? Is this modern, current times? So if we think of this, uh, Mark really invented this in the 90s. So if we think back into the 90s. I was just saying you start with it. Yeah, <laughs> so the internet's just coming around. <laughs> Anyone else? Trade shows. Trade shows? Yeah, what kind of trade shows? Um, therapy, massage. Um. Okay, yeah, so maybe he's communicating to other masseurs, other chiropractors to see if it's something useful uh, that they can uh, incorporate into their practice. Yeah, okay. So we already know that Mark has distributed it to some of his colleagues. So let's see Mark uh, chatting with one of his colleagues and see how the colleague uh, appreciates it. I think the colleague is just uh, getting ready. Welcome to our spa, dude. I have a wonderful massage tool that I want to sell it to you. Oh, we love the human touch, dude. We don't oh, do wood yeah. here. We're not that oh. kind of massage parlor. This really works well. Why don't you try it? I don't know, dude. We like the human touch here. Oh, so sorry to hear that. Maybe we could buy like one for the whole parlor. What does it cost? Oh, it's about $75. Dude, it's four balls of wood and four sticks. No it's sale, dude. Oh, oh, you're messing up my chi. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> What happened there? <laughs> yeah, so they're not really into it. It's not really something that they think is going to be useful for them. Yeah, so that you think this is something for at-home use, mm -hmm. and you'd be happy with just that. What if he took it a little bit further and developed a whole brand around it? Uh, so we can think of, um, I don't know if anyone's trying to think of something on the top of my head, like the, like the Tracy Anderson method. I'm not sure if anyone's heard of that, where um, it's this woman and she's started an exercise class and she's taken it further with videos and now she sells yoga mats with her brand on it. Uh, what if Mark Juarez did something like that? Do you think that would be? Feasible? Yeah. Yeah? Why do you say that? Because there's already more stuff that gets out there, so creating a brand and having an image gives you more value over other competitors. Yeah. So even if you price it higher, you can still sell it to the other brands around you. Yeah, so it increases its brand, its yeah. uh, value. No. And if they get that from their partner, they may not be spending the money for the, the, the uh, brand. Okay. I don't know, because we haven't actually seen what it looks like. So, I mean, people use stones, right, at massages. So if this becomes, like, so if it's a beautiful, pr I mean, we're making it sound like it's like you're going to get a splinter from it. Like, it might be a really nice product that actually gives you a different type of massage than a regular hand massage. So. Maybe yeah. It's like a specialty massage that you would pay for. I don't know. Yeah. Has anyone used one of these? Yeah. Yeah. My parents had one in their house when I was younger. Um, it was nice. I mean, it's good for household use. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's not flexible, is it? It's not flexible like your hands where you can kind of get into those knots. Yeah, so maybe what are some things that could go with the, uh, with the massage tool if he was uh, building a brand around it? Massage oils. Massage oils, yeah. Like a book to go with it, yeah. So almost like an instruction manual, but maybe a little bit more to it, like a bit more of the method behind it and why a massage is good for you. Yeah? Sorry, I think I saw another hand. Nope. All right, so how do we think, uh, where do we think he's progressing? Um, do we think he's got a bit more of a clearer customer in mind? No? That's a great question. Mark, do you know anything about patents or? I know very little. Can you help me with how the patent process goes? We all speculated. We're out of character now. <laughs> we all speculated about the patent process. Uh, but there has to be something unique about it uh, that, that isn't in common use. And I, we couldn't figure out anything about that, that that was not in common use, connecting balls with sticks. So we don't think it's patentable as that. But I think what Christine is trying to get at is uh, could it be patentable as something else? Does, does he just have to sell this or could he sell more of a brand, more of a service, uh, more of a technique? Because I don't know about you guys, but uh, I can't use those things. They're, I don't know how. Who was it that said they don't work very well? They don't dig in. Uh, they might if somebody who knew what they were doing could show you how. And that's where so the book might come in. Can I yeah. videotape my techniques and sell it, probably, along with the product? Yeah, like an instruction video. Yes. Like a Pilates DVD. Or yes. <laughs> OK. Right. Should we? So. Let's have a look at Mark having a conversation with his sister, bouncing off some ideas on some possible uh, clients or customers. Marky, it's been too long. Oh. What have you been doing with yourself? Oh, I have been a massage therapist in Germany. I have been ha having a wonderful business. I have invented a beautiful tool here Never that I use. Never growing up, always the Peter Pan. Oh. And another one of your harebrained schemes. How nice. Don't you like it? Let me guess, you want money. Yes. Uh -huh. Fine. Let's work up some numbers, shall we? So you say this thing will have an impact on people? Yes. All right. Who are you going to sell it to? Well, I'm going to sell this product to uh, massage parlors, uh, people who want to buy it in uh, stores like Target, oh dear. Walmart. Oh, dear. That's almost everybody. Yes. OK. All right, then. And what kind of value is this going to give them? What's it going to do for them? Well, if they have uh, muscle pain, this will relieve the muscle pain in their body. That? Yes. A block of wood? Yes. And some sticks? Yes. No, I also have a video to go with it. Huh? I will show you exactly how it works. It does wonders. Ah, so you'll show people how yes. to use it? Yes. Hmm. That could be useful. Is there anything else like that out there? I don't think so. I have not come across any so far. Ah, very nice, very nice. Tell you what, you're a little fuzzy on customers. I'm only going to give you, let's say, a five on customers. Oh. I think you need to be a little more clear on where they are. But if it's got the video and people can use it, 
All right, I'll go ahead and give you an eight. How about that for value? Okay. All right, and there's nothing else out there? I don't think so. I have not seen any. All right, I'll give you a nine. I will now plug this into my 1990s technology, a slide rule, and I will figure out what you're doing. Let's see now. Five, nine, and, oh, five, eight, and nine. Ooh, you're going to have 70% impact. Wow. Now let's just take a minute, flip over the napkin here, and think about feasibility. Okay. So, what are your skills in this? Well, you're a wonderful massage therapist, aren't you? Yes, I have been working on this for 15 years. And how good are you at working with wood? Uh, I have a helper who helps me with uh, designs. I do the design and he builds it for me. Ah, ever made a video? Yes. You have a VCR, do you? Yes. It's, it's the 90s. All right then. We'll give you a distinctive competency on that. Maybe core. So, what you're offering, is that clear? Well, sure, it's a how-to, right? Yes. But it's for both massage therapists and people. Okay. And people. I'll, I'll go with that. And your whole team consists of you and one guy? Yes. Uh-huh. I'm not so happy on the people. All right. Let's see. I have another slide rule for feasibility. I'll go ahead and give you a distinctive on competency. I'll go ahead and give you a, oh, we'll say a seven for the offering. And maybe for your people, you're a little thin, honey. We'll give you a four. I'll give you a 30% on that. All right. And the end. That is the end of our uh, pantomime show. So we'll give a big hand to uh, <laughs> Rafi and Marie. <laughs> So we're going to introduce ourselves. Um, the pantomime is not the only thing we're going to discuss in the case study. So my name is Christine. I'm not actually a narrator. Um, I am a PhD student and I live in Vancouver, BC. Um, I teach some marketing co uh, courses at a university there as well. And this is Ravi. Ravindra, I'm a professor in aerospace and mechanical engineering. I teach primarily uh, junior and senior level courses in mechanical and aerospace engineering. I'm Maureen. I teach in the business school at Indiana State University in Terre Haute, Indiana. All right, so before we move on, I'm just going to quickly wrap up this impact and feasibility matrix. So as Maureen, um, or uh, Mark's sister, was pointing out, uh, so she figured the impact was quite high. Um, she thought that it might be impactful for customers. It might, it really uh, could solve uh, a problem. It might be if uh, Mark releases some videos and some instructional tools, it could be quite easy to use. Uh, feasibility, however, is quite low. Uh, Mark's a team of one, um, and he's, uh, there's another reason. Uh, he doesn't really have his customer group that well identified. Now, I should tell you, these slide rules are real, and I did not invent them. They were invented by somebody else as part of an innovator kit. Uh, but it does measure on these two dimensions, and, and, and what this is, is a way to very, very quickly test out an idea you have for turning uh, a great invention into a great business plan or a great business concept. It doesn't do it for you, but you can quickly try out your ideas, test them, and, and say, okay, where am I? And basically, this is a, I'm nowhere, and these are the not quite yet. And we're always heading for the high impact, high feasibility quadrant. Yeah. So this is the ideal quadrant that you want to be in. And we can see that Mark isn't quite there yet. Mark really just has an idea, um, a product. But he doesn't really know how to take that to a final, final business. So how do we get from here? here. So we're going to look at six questions that will hopefully help us shape the product that we have 
into a business, plan, a business concept. So, first of all, is this, is this new? Is this new to the world? No. No? In 1995, is it new to the world? Uh, it is then. Yeah. <laughs> Does everyone, sorry, what was your name? Ibrahim. Ibrahim, does everyone agree with Ibrahim? It's, it's new to the world? Yeah, okay, so it's new. Is it new to the market? Yeah, so usually if it's new to the world, it's probably new to the market. Is it a new product line? Yeah, so maybe we're not the most educated to make this decision, but we can kind of guess that maybe maybe it is a new product line. Maybe there aren't that many uh, massage tools available at that time. Now, to be fair, though, what you're talking about is a substitute, and they did have Advil back then. <laughs> oh, but, but substitutes are, are fair game. Is it a new, uh, a new application of an existing product? Or a service? Yeah, so we have massage already. It's just a new way of applying it. Does it significantly reduce the cost of an existing product or service? Yeah. And so you were saying before that maybe this is something people can take home in between massage appointments, right? Yeah. So maybe you don't have to go as often. I think it depends on how well it works. Yeah. And it depends on how expensive it is. Because you were saying, well, you can make it a brand, and you have to now get this video and this book in order to use it, and however much it will cost. Okay, that's a good point. Does anyone disagree or? No, all right. No, that's a really good point. He, he, he would have had to try that and fail. As a matter of fact, kind of the whole purpose of this model is to try out ideas and run into things like that because maybe then he would have eventually decided consumers aren't my people. Maybe massage schools are my people. Or maybe established parlors, which didn't work out for him that well. But I guess, I guess the point is, uh, this is not a, a one-shot deal. Uh, kind, of, kind of the purpose of going through this model is to say, we have to experiment. We have to experiment again and again and again and kind of inch our way to where we want to be. And what was wrong with that iteration? What was wrong with that iteration? But I, I think you make a good point. A lot of people have these in their homes. And how many use them on a regular basis? Yeah, so there's some evidence for us that we would have to then take back and say, okay, well, who would actually want this and use it and, and maybe be a repeat customer? Mm -hmm. Does it improve an existing product or service? No. Mm -mm. no. Alternative service. Alternative service? Okay. Instead of a direct competitor, it's an alternative. Totally, totally different to... Well, there's a thing in, in entrepreneurship that they taught us that was something um, that's called an alternative, I think it's an alternative something, like it, almost like a competitor, but it's not a, it's not like the same competing thing, it's more an alternate to what you're already using. So like a psychologist versus, um, what's a, well, medication, a psychiatrist and a psychologist are alternatives. So a supplement almost? Kind of, yeah, there's a word for it, I'm not remembering what but kind of. Okay. So like you instead of a massage, you could use this, and that's an alternate. So you think this is more of a substitute for massage? I would think so. You think people would stop going for professional massages and instead? I think it, it depends. I don't actually, I don't know. I think it depends. Does anyone else 
have an opinion on this? Do you think this is an alternative to professional yes, massage? Okay. Sure. Well, I don't know what the market is for people who regular, regularly go get massages, but I think that's a huge part of it. Like people like myself, like I don't regularly go get a massage, but sometimes I feel like a muscle pain. So for me, like, yeah, that would prop, that could be an alternative. I don't feel This would be a, a great tool for you? Yeah. Something okay. easy to grab so you don't need to make an appointment. You can just at home quickly, mm -hmm. yeah. I think okay. you're actually talking about a One supplement, really, aren't yeah. you? Go ahead. Yeah. It would not replace your massage. It would yeah. supplement it, yeah. like, I think in between. For people who, you know, do like to go to the massage a lot, it's more because, you know, it's sort of like this luxury, you know, you go, they treat you really well, you, you know, you lay on the table, they give you a great massage, you feel kind of sleepy afterwards, you go home, you just feel relaxed and good. It's like, it's an experience, it's not just the massage itself. Yeah, yeah, and the music. Okay. Chiropractors. All right. So, so would a chiropractor perhaps be an alternative? Yeah, like not, a, as opposed to like a luxury massage, like for that market. Yeah, that's think. not really a substitute, but it is an alternative, just like mm -hmm. you said, because it, it's a different thing, but it could relieve pain. Mm -hmm. In, in, in your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if there's a lot of these and this doesn't really add anything distinctive, then we'd say it doesn't have very high impact. People have plenty of options out there. Mm -hmm. But in this case, if he's actually offering it, say, to massage therapists or training massage therapists and he's giving them a way perhaps to uh, lengthen their careers by, not, by relieving some of the stress that they feel doing the work, then it in the, the chiropractor is not an alternative for that. So it really depends, really depends on how we've decided to enter the market. If we decide to enter the market with consumers everywhere, then there's a lot of alternatives and we're probably not going to see a lot of impact there. But if we can identify a way to enter the market where there are fewer of these alternatives, fewer of these substitutes, and this really is a distinctive competency, and, and this is the big one, there's actually a big enough market out there to make this make sense. Because you remember when he first went to the massage parlor, they said maybe we'll take one and it's $75, they'll take zero. Uh, that might not have been a big enough market. Massage schools might have been a better choice for him. But the question is, how do we find a way to enter the market that's going to give us both the impact and the feasibility that he needs to get into that upper quadrant? And I think what you're all kind of telling us is consumers is not a very good place, is it? Let me talk a little bit about patents. We talked about patents. Uh, in order to patent a product, the first step is to get a patent search done, okay? That itself would cost anywhere from three to $5,000. And after the patent search is done, if the patent attorney says, Yes, there is nothing out there like this. It's going to cost you anywhere from twelve to twenty thousand dollars to get a patent, and that's a long, drawn process that may take one to three years. In addition, Mark has already given a few of the samples to his friends and customers to try it out without any non-disclosure agreement. That means the cat is already out of the bag. The invention is out, anybody can replicate it, and then he has no recourse to suing them because he did not protect the idea or the content. That's important to remember when you uh, come up with a new idea or a product. Any questions? So maybe we should ask, do you, do you think there's any way he could enter this market in a sustainable way. I'm sorry, what is your name? Yes, Jesse. Jesse. So this is what I would do if I was Mark. I would actually do something similar to Texas Instrument, how they, they've never changed their TI-49 or whatever in like two, three decades. Mm -hmm. So we would go directly to schools and education for the massage parlors and try to get our devices or this invention into every massage parlor we can so the customer sees this device and they're like, oh, this is a professional device that the uh, uh, massage people have been trained to use. And from there, we can spin off and uh, approach the customers and say, like, would you like to be like a professional massage person? Here's our guide. It's also proprietary materials that we can patent easily. So like the balls are special in some way. And then now Mark has great feasibility. He can reduce the cost and create a compared, uh, com competitive 
uh, advantage there, and he's having high impact throughout the whole market. Okay, I'm so glad you didn't talk while we were doing the show because that would have been so hard to get into a pantomime. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you're talking about a stepwise approach. And notice the first step was to establish a brand, was to not establish the physical value of this thing, but to establish the mental value of this thing by having people think it's a professional thing, it's, it's, it's what the pros use, that's what I want. How many of us buy uh, shampoo and conditioner in the salon? Good, because it's no better than the other shampoo and, oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, it's not because it's better. Sometimes just the brands that I want are not in normal stores. It kind of depends. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's possible, but what they're doing is they can charge a lot more for that because they've got it in your mind that this is something special. Now, if we can't get it in, codified into law that this is something special, which I'd say we can't, getting it in people's minds as something special can be just as good, can be better. Uh, I didn't bring my purse today, but it's a fossil purse. No, is it fossil? Yeah, well, fossil is the brand that makes watches. Okay, now Apple makes watches. But some people buy things because they're retro, because they're special, uh, because they have that certain, I don't know, country feel or something. If you can get something into people's minds and say, this is the natural way, this is the good thing, uh, then you could create value for this item that doesn't really have a patentable value, but it, it, it could have a psychological value. And now it's Jess, correct? And what Jess is saying, we could do this as a two-step process. Maybe even the first step wouldn't make us a lot of money, depending on how many we sold. But if they were seen enough that we could then later make this something that could appeal to a larger market, then that might take care of the biggest problem that he has, which is his feasibility problem, which is kind of getting enough people that, that actually want to buy it. That was a, how, how, how many of us think Jesse's idea has maybe a chance? It's the best chance you've heard, I think. <laughs> okay. Feasibility analysis first, because even though it's an amazing idea, because it would work psychologically, people are like that. If no one actually would feasibly like the product, then the chances of it working are lower, though because of psychology, I I still think it's a good idea either way because people will think something's cool if you tell them something's cool enough times in the media or whatever. Or, sh or show them that something's cool. Yeah. Go ahead. Honestly, though, I mean, I really don't think you'd be able to get it into the massage schools because, you know, it's not really an accepted tool. You know, there's not really anything <coughs> to train them except for the inventor. So the schools themselves aren't going to, you know, specially trained teachers to teach their students how to use this. Yeah, one of the issues on this model that I was using talks about the team and him and one guy to make the wooden tool isn't going to cut it when, it when it comes to term. He would actually need to train teachers uh, to then go out to these massage schools and say, here's how you do it. Maybe not work at the massage schools, but go around to the massage schools. So he has a lot of thinking to do in terms of organization, and that's another reason why he's way low on the feasibility scale. It's also another problem. People in massage schools are your age and they don't have arthritis and they're not worried yet about not being strong enough to continue in their career. Uh, a lot of the people that are going to actually want to use this product are, shall we say, the more experienced people. But some of the more experienced massage therapists, I assume, are the ones who get a lot of clients that might trust them, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we'd have to think about that. The feasibility study, yeah. You know, I've been going through here and saying, well, I guess you could reach this many people, but that's not the right way. Uh, we would actually have to do surveys, studies, et cetera. Okay, now, now you are? Yeah, so I think this kind of product is more like a mass market thing. Mm -hmm. So you should outsource the production to China and then do infomercials. Okay, but it's the 90s. Wasn't there infomercials? Yeah, there were definitely infomercials. Yeah. You got me there. So you can do that. And then <laughs> it just wasn't as much outsourcing to China. I guess it was uh, coming on. Yeah, so lower production costs so you can bring the price down and then infomercials to educate the, like, the customers. And then if the customers catch on to it, then you can go to the massage parlors and tell them, like, hey, like, people like to use this. You can have it in your like, stores. Okay, and your name is? Ibrahim. Ibrahim. Yeah. Okay, so we have Ibrahim and Jess. They have the same idea in perfect reverse order. Which one do you think is more feasible? I think his, I, I can't explain completely why, but maybe it's because of the 
simplicity of the product, um, for me personally, looking at that, I would see that, and of course I'm used to seeing that as mass market. That's a mass market product. So maybe that's where I'm coming right. from there. But it's 1995 Jesse, now. Jesse had a point. So like we all had to buy Texas Instrument TI-49, mm -hmm. and lots of these professionals, so in, in a massage school, I'm thinking that there's a person, a professor on top, right? who teaches all the students, and the professor knows that arthritis and all this thing is a problem. So we tell the professors, hey, like, we have this, this device that can help your students not have the same issues you have. And they try it out, and the professors think that it works, so they require all their students to buy it as well. And then we've created a, something like TI, where we all have to use the same calculator. Yeah, Jess is definitely into the wedge. Uh, we're all faculty, and I can tell you, we have booksellers wanting us to come to focus groups and everything else because they want us to make all of our students buy their $150 textbooks. So if you get the right wedge, uh, yeah, if, if, if you have like a massage teacher that says, all my students will get this and use this and learn how to use it, you, you, you could be branching out from there. Yeah, but then the thing is, he can't patent it, so there's no point. Someone can copy him and undercut his price. So that's why having an infomercial being first to market real quick is a better like, alternative. Yeah, have you like read the Blue Ocean Strategy? Yeah. Yeah, so what Abraham is doing is going for a huge, what they call catchment, yeah. uh, right off the bat. And hopefully you're saying get the brand established. Yeah. Actually, you're both talking about establishing the brand. But one, as a massage therapist brand that people might want to pick up on, and one is everybody's got one, you should have one too. Mm -hmm. Megan. Um, I was just going to add to his too. Another point with that is the people that come into massage parlors, um, depending on the percentage, might be lower than we think in terms of the whole population. So actually, that's another reason his might work better, because maybe you go into a massage parlor, but they never do, therefore they never see it. And maybe you talk about it, but maybe you don't. So it kind of depends. This one's a little more, everyone sees it, and there's a bigger chance of it catching on. So I think we can all agree we're stuck on feasibility, and we're speculating. Because we don't know if uh, people going to a massage parlor would want the tool their massage therapist use, or, or, if, or if they would say that's what you're supposed to do. We also don't know if this thing is all over the place, would uh, high-end massage teachers say, well, what's the point of teaching my people to do that? My whole job is to give people something special when they come in here that they can't get at home, that they can't get for their spouse. I'm sorry, you are? Uh, Samantha. Samantha, yes. And honestly, I mean, I don't really see massage teachers adopting this just because even when you go to a massage and get, say, a hot stones massage, Oh, at least half the massage is still, you know, done with Can the hands, not just the stones, because I think that okay? part of it is just being able to dig in and loosen those knots and, you know, the maneuverability of it, and I don't think that tool is going to do anything that hot stones or your hands would. Yeah, the tool mechanizes, even a wooden tool, really mechanizes what has come to be seen as a very touch service. I don't know how to say that. But, but a, a massage therapist might say this is the first step toward replacing me with a computer or, or replacing me with a ball and some sticks. So they, they could feel threatened, just like the retailers that we saw earlier might have felt threatened by that great big box that, that might have favored online sales, which were coming in at the time. So yeah, again, uh, I think his, his only shot really was uh, the psychology angle, though. Well, whether that was getting a high-end name and then making everybody say, I want it, or getting everybody to have it and say, what, you don't have one? Fidget spinner. Yeah. <laughs> but we give out fidget spinners at orientation. So I, although I, I think maybe they patented that. I think that was patentable. That's a completely different thing. We've still got, a, like, a failed patent? Yeah, she forgot to maintain it. Oh. Well, that's not very bright. <laughs> but um, as a brain was saying, we will always have the problem of undercutting. What about this problem of undercutting, this thing that we can't patent? Would that be a bigger threat if we went for the whole mass market or if we went to the high end? Uh, it's a bigger threat. Undercutting is a bigger threat if we go to the high end. Why is that? Well, let's establish like, a really good brand. Uh, 
because there's always going to be people that can undercut you out there. Right. So unless you bring more value to it, then it's pointless. Right. So he would have to establish, if he can't patent, he would have to establish his brand. Yeah. He would have to have people saying, oh, but I only want the Mark Juarez one. But then that takes time, and he already gave it out to people. So, so that, that's too late. Yeah. So, so you think that ship has sailed for him? Yeah. OK. Well, we don't have an answer. I'm sorry. Well, we do have an answer, because y you can get these things anywhere. Uh, so it did end up in the mass market. I think it did also go through massage places for a time, but they were kind of, of, of trendy there. So uh, this was a hard one, wasn't it? I, 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 I appreciate your thoughts, but yes, I think he had to choose between the wedge approach and the, the catchment approach. And I'm guessing he never made any money, but I don't know the outcome. Any other comments, thoughts? Well, to summarize, if there is an idea for a product, one has to see what are the steps needed to push it to your business concept and then market it. Okay? So we need to go through the feasibility study impact, and many times you have to do an elaborate customer survey to see where the market is. Uh, before you jump in, or else you're going to lose a lot of money and no product to sell. Okay, well, I think we should wrap it up then. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for being here. Thank you. We appreciate your participation. Thank you. Thank you.